Yeah, what if there's thousands of these swarm ships and you're hit you're hitting onesie twosie here and there? What if he gets out in here and like scrapes his eyes and now he's one eye for the rest of his life? Like what are you doing? And so instead of saying centimeters like a communist, he said inch like an American. I think they just had another machine somehow that was ready behind it to push it. Why is he going so fast? We are convinced that Star Trek universe can just make gravity point whichever way they need. Spock on the Enterprise bridge says that on the planet they encounter in the nebula, there's limited to no life forms. What? Let's listen first. Massive subterranean development, but limited to no life forms on the surface. I mean, what, what, what is he talking about? If we go back to the picture, we go left. There's a picture on the surface of planet later in the movie. This is not limited to no life, no life forms. There's trees, this is, bushes. This is, this is teeming with life forms, even different types of life forms. You have this like fungus looking thing growing on the trees. That's right. Moss growing I mean, on the trees. Yeah. I mean, teeming with life in a space situation, maybe I would imagine be much less within this. This is like an earth ecosystem. That's right. Like the, this is a healthy earth ecosystem. I've seen yeah. places with much less foliage than this. That's right. So what does he mean limited to no life forms? He means like they're not Vulcan. So yeah. therefore, wh what could that possibly mean? They're not as enlightened as Vulcan. So therefore they're subhuman. They're sub, the sub life. That, that, that's no right. Idea. If I was an away team and Spock was like, there's limited to no life forms on that planet. And I beam down. I'm like, I'm in the woods. Like what? I'm in the woods. I'm going to get ticks. <laughs> this is terrible. I did not this have, <laughs> I did not tape my pants to my shoes. That's right. Let's uh, let's beam back up. Let's get the proper equipment for a planet with a forest. Thanks, Spock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Spock. Uh, what was he doing? Super wrong statement. Super wrong. Yeah, I wonder if... Okay, so there's definitely flora, like, so yeah. plants. But I, yeah. I wonder, like, can you have a plant ecosystem only? Or do you need to have something that eats away decayed stuff so fungi do you need to have stuff that produces that converts the tr the plant matter into other nutrients so do you need some animals to eat the stuff and then to poop out the nutrients is it i don't know so i'm not an ecologist so i think ecology is in its infancy and like can you can i think you can ask this is, this is my physicist understanding of what's going on so grain of salt but like if you ask a question like, can an ecosystem survive without fungus or animals or something to take care of the, I don't know, decayed matter? I think the answer is a huge, we don't know because it's, it's so complex and we can't even in the current world, like replicate the earth ecosystems within like a dome or something. Like it just falls apart. We, we have so little understanding that we can't even do that. How can we answer the question of like a hypothetical ecosystem on a a planet where life evolved independently of ours? I think I think we cannot answer that question oh. right now. I mean, we we could trivially answer that question and just be like, this tree does this thing perfectly. This other thing does it perfectly. Done. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Okay, but there may not be real systems that actually do that. That's right. And these are like intertwined, like right. maximally intertwined systems. So changing one thing it's not obvious how that's going to affect the other parts of the eco ecological web um, intertwined yeah. and for example with like the yosemite wolves like uh, delicately yeah. non-linear balance if you have right. too many wolves they kill all the deer then then the grass overgrows then you have forest fires and if you have too few wolves then there are too many deers what did i say the same thing twice anyway Delicate, yeah. uh, delicately balanced yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. So it's like you change the wolf population and the flowers bloom more brighter in the summer. Like what? What? That's what? unexpected. <laughs> unexpected, you know. Or like, yeah, you mess with the wolves and now forest fires are a problem. Like I thought wolves mm. eat, ate deer. Like what, what are we talking about? Forest fires. It's just so mm. interconnected. You know, it's hard to make solid predictions. But Spock is up there in the spaceship saying, like, there's no one walking and talking, so therefore there's no life on this planet. No, no life on this planet. Spock. Elitist. Elitist. And the Enterprise encounters the swarm once they're in the nebula, and man, it's they get destroyed. Oh, creepy sound too. It's like bugs. It's like they're hitting phasers. Full, full speed, full blast, full blast. The 
Splinter dish now. Super good for the Vampires. That's a that's a dominant victory for the swarms. I mean, you're taking on like Not the flagship close. of the of Starfleet, and you just dominated the fight. And and the Enterprise is shooting shooting full blasts, shooting right. phasers, and and they're get, they're making hits. It's not like they're missing. Yeah. It's just you can't take out one or two ships at a time and then do any type of substantial damage to these. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, what if there's thousands of these swarm ships and you're hit you're hitting onesie twosie here and there? Like it's just not gonna have a big effect on the swarm. I think the so, right move was for Kirk to just get out of there, leave, run. Right. Right. So if I remember, Spock says, so Kirk is like, she's like, shields up. Like, what? what is going yeah. on? Shields up, red yeah. alert. And yeah. then Spock's like, we are not equipped to handle this. And then, and but Kirk, Kirk should know. Kirk should know the capabilities of his sh of his ship and, and what they're not capable of. And so he should right. immediately be like, Sulu, get us out of here. That's right. If you don't know the capabilities of the swarm, but you know you can't take them out quickly, right? And and your second in command is like, "Hey, we're not ready for this. You got to run. Yep. You can't hang around, right?" I mean, heck, I don't know if this is kosher, but Sulu maybe even is like, "I'm overriding this. I'm getting us out of here." Oof. But that's breaking the chain of command. But but I, I gosh, he might have the authority to do that. I mean. That's the reason why you have a helmsman is because they're not an autonomous robot. That's right. Who's like, I will do what I say at all times. Like, he sees the he sees the situation and he's like, I'm out. Got to get and us then, out here. Yeah. If Kirk later on is like, that was the worst move. Like, you shouldn't have done that. He's like, well, this is my reasoning at the time. And we and, are alive. <laughs> and we are alive. We can go back in. But that was my call. Right. That's right. It was it was a breakdown of the command on the bridge. I mean, effectively, Kirk froze because because people were giving him information, but Kirk mm -hmm. was not not issuing commands. <laughs> That's like, right, like that. I guess we're saying we don't know what Sulu is allowed to do and not to do, mm -hmm. but if he is allowed to make that decision, he also froze. Right. But we we don't actually know though. I don't know. So. I don't know what their their rules are for what the helmsman yeah. can override. But yeah, so bad decision or non decision freezing in place and then total domination completely this would this is just this is the third movie in the kelvin timeline and each time starfleet has a enormous fear moment where it's like we need to make serious adjustments to, to starfleet because we got Every time that they encountered an enemy that they, where they they got completely destroyed, completely dominated mm -hmm. by this enemy, and so on one hand, I mean, on one hand, that's good because when you encounter weak points, then you know to fix them. So hopefully, Star Trek, uh, Star Fleet learns from this. Yeah, hopefully, right? Because they're gonna have to do a serious mm -hmm. debrief and be like, we need to rethink our weapons and our ship design, and kind of everything again. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So these enemies, the I guess this is Crawl. I don't know what his group of people are called. They have a very ter terrifying way to get on board to to do ship breaches. I forget what this is called. It's super super terrifying. Imagine being inside the Enterprise, but it's and it's super good. It's super effective, but it's really really bad. Yeah, something coming out of that. Yep. Oh, Look at this weapon. Oh, lightning. Oh, sick. And then they call him Peter. And he drops in. Oh, like that slow stand up. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what's he doing? Like, what's like? Yeah. He's got no helmet on. Like everyone, everyone else got the helmet except him and and except him and his first officer because we need mm -hmm. to see their faces. But everyone yeah. else. Coming in with these these suits here, that's atmospheric mm -hmm. suits. So so super cool, terrifying. Like a, you board the ship from multiple directions, very hard to repel borders. But then your commander comes in without air. So he's relying. He's relying on the ship that you've just punctured, that you've like that you're attacking. You're relying on their life support systems to still be functioning. 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it, make, it make, doesn't make any sense because you're literally... Crawl and his crew are literally right. destroying the hull of the Enterprise, which is the thing keeping the keeping atmosphere the in the ship. And then you don't have a helmet. Weird. Weird. I mean, but super good strategy because you attack it. There's no like, like they're going to the door. Let's just defend the door. Like, no, you punct, you just puncture the hull wherever yeah. you need to. You got to have the mask uh, on. Like, what are you doing? Get, yeah. get your helmet. So, so if you're going to board, you need an atmospheric suit. Yeah. But I even don't even, do they even need to board? It's such a dominant engagement for them do they even what what did they need to board oh they needed to get that weapon is that right they were looking oh, yeah. for that they, weapon. they wanted the artifact i guess what later we find out is a weapon yeah yeah right in which case they destroyed the ship kind of a lot are they confident that they didn't destroy the artifact weapon thing as well that's right and they why don't they just puncture the ship like you can just chip away the ship from the edge <laughs> and then that's right when you when the ship loses integrity and it loses i guess no, when it loses life support and loses oxygen confinement mm -hmm. then everything inside dies and you just walk in peacefully mm -hmm. why, why are you rushing that's in right. here that's right so take out the nacelles that was a good move but then after the nacelles are toast they're not running anywhere so you're yeah, in good shape dead in space yep. now you have time to you know evacuate the ship with all make all the gas rush out of the ship and you can take mm -hmm. your time and then search the ship systematically to get the weapon and like harvest the ship for whatever materials you want take your time there's That's no right. rush here there's no rush yeah but if you're going to do this put on a helmet put on a helmet come on <laughs> come on what if he gets out in here and like scrapes his eyes and now he's one eye for the rest of his life like what are you doing Just put a helmet oh, oh that's right there's like they're puncturing the ship there's all these like rough edges and he's like, yep. ooh, I got cut. I'm lacerated. Blood loss. Lacerated. lacerated on the cheek. Okay. Lacerated okay. the eye? What? Depth, depth perception yeah. forever? What? Yeah, gone forever. Okay, so then the Enterprise comes down. And this is super cool. Super cool pairing. I like these two hanging out together. And and McCoy saves Spock. And he says he's, you were within an inch from life and death. Ah! Oh my God, Spock. You know, you're uh, left, an inch to the left, and you'd be dead already. Did you hear that? I didn't catch it. An inch to the left is he'd yeah, be dead. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, an inch, an inch, right? Proof, proof that in Starfleet, they still use the Imperial system. Ah, uh, yeah, buddy. America. America, it's, you know, it. okay. So does that mean that Starfleet and the Federation are an extension of of the United States into the future. I think so. I mean, it's in San they Francisco. Didn't, they, didn't, they didn't, exactly. So Starfleet headquarters is in San Francisco and they did not move to the metric system, which I feel like if any other, like every other except for two countries in the world, if any other of those countries started Starfleet, they'd be like, no, no, no we're doing metric. What, we're, not, we're not doing inches here. But here, you know, McCoy, McCoy's, McCoy's talking inches. That's right. And so instead of saying centimeters like a communist, he said inch like an American. Freedom, yep. Freedom. That's right. The freedom units. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this was, I really like this pairing as well. Sulu and Hura. They're like stranded on a planet and they immediately get into like teamwork mode. Let's get some intelligence. Let's go around the base and see what's happening. I thought it was cool. This is a Magellan probe. Federation was using these to find a way through the nebula. What's he using it for? They're like intelligence, mm -hmm. Magellan probe. Following cables. Mm -hmm. What do you see? He's been piggybacking the subspace links between the probes. Can we use it to send a distress signal? I can try. Let's send. He's access to Yorktown database. He's got Starfleet data files, ship logs. He's been watching us this whole time. So they have different expertise, like Ahura's communications. So she does. She can like recognize communications quickly, and immediately uh, Sulu steps back. He's like, "What do you see?" But mm -hmm. then he immediately goes to another screen to figure out like what's going on. Like, oh, I can see database information. Like, teamwork dialed in. And They're Sulu has had command experience when Kirk and Spock are off the ship. Like, he's he's in command. And so I really I really liked this pairing, and I really liked their growth that we see here because in yeah. in the first movie they're they're super junior. They're like fresh fresh from the academy. Um, yeah. But then here they are, like they're taking care of everyone else. Like everyone else stay in the, every, all the other Starfleet officers, like stay in the prison so that you don't get caught, but we're going to go out, we're going to scout. And yeah, they're totally in charge. I like it. 
Yeah. And actually, they actually don't really know how to navigate, like sneak around, follow cables, find readouts, and apparently weird knowledge of ancient probes they can recognize on the spot. <laughs> it, was, it was cool. I, I really like when they finally, when the crew gets down onto the planet and they're sort of exploring, I was kind of into it. Like the story Absolutely. was chugging along pretty good. It really felt like they were trained Starfleet officers who were in a situation that you've never they've never encountered before, but they're like, stay calm, stay cool, figure it out, and let's go investigate. And yeah, I liked yeah. it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. You can see the growth, the growth of these people yeah. who, I mean, maybe it's unfair because they're on a bridge, so they get much more experience, <laughs> like more than just rank. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, super cool. Also, this technology that Crawl and his people have, I don't know, taken from the Franklin and sort of jerry-rigged up here, it's in great shape. And That's right. It's like a couple it's hundred years old, right? A couple, couple hundred years old. And it's not like they've erected good shelters to like keep it environmentally secure. No, it's out in the elements. Yeah, this is like hull debris. It's only yeah. damaged junk. And and there's definitely holes and like rain could whip on through there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in great shape. This stuff is designed to last. My God. That's right. <laughs> Starfleet equipment Star designed forever. I mean... I mean the screen itself. I mean, okay, that was a, that's one of the first things I'd expect to break down is the screen. Hmm. It's it's in great shape. It is kind of like one of those green like nineteen eighties screens it's earlier. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just lasting. Maybe they chose that on cool purpose because so, it would last. Hmm. Yeah, and like the what was this like in the two thousand tens maybe or two thousands? We had these plasma televisions that you had to burn yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> maybe this is burnt in, and it's just always this screen. Oh. No, 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 they would turn it off. They would no, turn no. it off. If it was like that. Yeah, and then and then Uhura would immediately recognize, like, oh, this screen is inoperable. It's not updating. Yeah, yeah. Super so cool. cool. I really like this this pairing I, and this scene. Yeah, you see them. I like See it. them growing up. I love it. This was weird. This is Kirk wanted to I don't know turn on this thruster from a distance, so he shoots it. The thruster turns on when he shoots it. Oh, it's square, right? No, shit, it's round. Okay, shot it. It turns on. Okay. Might have made dead space. There's these thrusters in dead space. Mount it. Shoot the little thing. It turns on. Yeah, works the same. Okay, but the one in dead space is like an engineered device. That you mount on th mount on things and you shoot and then the thruster turns on, but why does the thruster turn on on the Franklin? The Franklin? It really seems like it shouldn't do that. If I shoot, I mean, <laughs> I guess it's possible that I could shoot it in just the right way where it, it simulates what I what I would have done if I pressed the button, but I feel like shooting it would puncture something and then make it I mean, inoperable. It wouldn't that be weird? I go to I go to like the jet engine on the in, at the airport. I'm like, bam! I shoot it. And then and it like turns off. on. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Every day I turn it, I get in my car, I put my key fob in my pocket, and I shoot the, the ignition. <laughs> I shoot the push to start, and it works. <laughs> Why do you have a gun in your car? Oh, just start it. Just that's how it, it's, it's, it's not a defense gun. It's a it's like a race, like a track race. It's a starter gun. That's right. <laughs> Wild. Weird. Yeah. yeah, I don't get it. Weird. It sh weird. should have uh, broke the thing. Should have broken it. Yeah. So later on, Krull finds finds Sulu and and Uhura, and um, they have a little conversation. It's like about ph philosophy of Krull's philosophy versus versus um, Sulu and therefore Starfleet's. Uh, it's interesting. Federation has taught you that conflict should not exist, but without struggle, you would never know who you truly are. You have no idea who we are. But you'll soon find out. So this scene was cool for two reasons. Maybe let's do them one at a time. So it was cool that Kroll has his philosophy. Everyone's mm -hmm. got a philosophy. And his philosophy is that you need to have hard times in order to overcome them. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and now his view is from a warrior's perspective. Mm -hmm. So his hard times is in terms of combat, right? Um, and there is some type of truth to that. So for example, if I, if I only have yes men around me all the time and then no one's challenging my ideas then i a ceo surrounded by my my c-suite of yes men could lead us into some pretty bad places 
Um, also, if they're always saying yes and taking care of things around me, then what will happen if we're actually in a situation when somebody actually like needs to say no? Like, will I be able to handle it? Yeah, and like, also, I think this is a military thing as well. If you don't fight wars regularly, you lose practice and you get bad at it. Yeah. So if you have two societies, one warlike that's fighting wars all the time, and one that's peaceful, that has a military but barely uses it, it's hard for the military that never goes to war to like start doing war at a high level right away. Like, you need the conflict. Even if though, even if that group that has that doesn't go to war often, even if they have better weapons, even if they have better logistics, right? But they don't know how to operate those. They don't know how to actualize their ideas. Mm -hmm. Then they they very possibly could lose because mm -hmm. they don't they don't have the culture. They don't have like. Yeah the mental flexibility and resilience to encounter the difficult times. Yeah. And I've, I've never been in war, but I imagine like you can have all these great ideas and things to execute and they actually work. But if you can't execute them under fire in terrible yep. situations, under stress, emotion, all of it, guys dying, it's, it's worthless and you need to practice that. Right. So on one hand, I don't like it, but on the other hand, it's kind of true. I, I get it. Like I see it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool, it's cool for as, for me as a viewer to see how this group of people changed over time, or I guess how their society is shaped. Given that this is like the the linchpin of their philosophy. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting here is right at the end, Sulu says, "You have no idea who we are, but you'll soon find out." That's a threat. That, right? That's a threat. Yeah. That's Sulu saying, saying so, so Krull says, like, you guys are about exploration and science and making friends with people out in space. And Sulu saying, yes, but actually we're a warlike people, right? We got right. teeth. We, like we, yeah. we, can, we can mess you up. We may be explorers, but if we want to bring it, it's going to be brought. That's an interesting statement about Starfleet. Because Starfleet, though, is like, we're about exploration and science and we want to make friends and bring new people into, into the Federation. But actually... Every ship you have is armed. I guess maybe not science vessels, but like, but every ship that we follow along in the, in the in the series, mm -hmm. like they're armed. Like we, is it possible for us to have a purely friendly fleet, purely friendly species? This, yeah, this does go back to me and the confusion of like, is Starfleet military exploration? Because it seems like it's a mix, and I, I always thought that they should have exploration and peaceful diplomatic ships and then dedicated military ships. It shouldn't be the same. But maybe this is the Kelvin timeline. They just are more militaristic. Oh, I was I was commenting on the two-facedness of Starfleet, where oh. they like publicly tell everyone, like, we're about making friends. We're about science and exploration and, and learning. But it's actually like, hey, we've got guns like <laughs> loaded up in our <laughs> pockets. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like we're ready to fight whenever you like you you imprison us. Like we're we're we already have our tech developed. We already have our ships ready to fight. Like, but we tell everyone like, yeah. we're about peace. Right, we're about peace. We're about progression and you know all these peaceful things. But if you disagree with us about that, we're gonna kill you. Like, whoa, okay, whoa. all Dang. right, right, okay, all right. They do, I think this is dealt with some in like Deep Space Nine with Section 31 and different things. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Building a utopian society is challenging. Like, it's not straightforward. Like, everybody just get along and don't be a dick. Like, that's, right. in, that's not, it's so much more complicated than that. So they want to build this federation which has like, which has external boundaries. And then they want to build a culture internally where they can be harmonious and and be be safe amongst each other but actually built into that is we're dangerous to defend the utopian society because you can't be utopian with no defenses ah, it's such a dichotomy you, get, you get walked on yeah weird but back to crawl i get it like his philosophy of you need to challenge yourself in order for your for self to improvements. I mean, imagine if you if your exercise routine was going to was I'm going to lift five pounds, thirty reps, and that's it forever. Like you, you don't get growth like this. You need like increment. You need a progressive overload. 
I mean, the same thing is true for our intellectual requirements. If you have the same ideas all the time and you have, you're surrounded by that all the time, that doesn't allow room for growth because there's no reason to. That's why I do, that's why I do an assault every month just to keep, you know, keep on my toes. I assault somebody every month just to make sure I, you know, I can handle myself in the trenches. Just, Not physically, <laughs> you, you're intellectually assaulting them. Okay, okay. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> okay. physically. I just go on the street, make sure I'm, it's too much. Okay, so you don't need to do both. You do both, you assault <laughs> someone and then, and then assault their politics. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is for your growth. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm you're weak. weak. Step it up. <laughs> I should be getting beat up if society is strong. I mean, it's gladiators, kinda. right? So uh, I forget this woman's name, the person with like the the white skin and the black tattoos. Um, she has she found the Franklin and is able to camouflage it with this interesting tech. How does this tech work? She's rigged up image refractors. Like some sort of holographic camouflage. Hi, sir. So I don't I don't think refraction and holograms are the same thing. Not. So, or or they could be part of the same tech. But either Kirk is right or Scotty is right, but I don't think they're, they both can be right. Well, Kirk says there's, there's some type of refractors or hologram and Scotty is like, yep. Like he said, he, the, yeah. Kirk gave an or question and, and, <laughs> and Scotty's like, yes to the whole thing, which sounds like Scotty doesn't know what he's talking about. So he's just BS'd it. Yep. Because uh, so if I look at it, they like per the per they project onto the ship. These projectors mm -hmm. project onto the ship. To me, that doesn't sound like a hologram, because oh, it doesn't or is it? So to me, that sounds like yes, a hologram. But maybe we should walk it back and say what is refraction, so we can compare them. So I was thinking, like, in if you. You have, you have light coming from all directions towards the ship. Okay. Right, and you need the light to, if the ship wasn't there, the light from all directions would just continue on normally. Perfect. So if you have a refractor, the light would come in, go around the ship, and then come out the same way. And it uh, would go from all directions. Right, do that from all. So somehow you create up some sort of smart 3D refractor that makes all light continue on as if it was, as if the ship wasn't there. So I think you have an advanced idea of refraction. So when I think of refraction, I think of like of air to water, yeah. and then you have light coming through and it gets bent. Or maybe yeah. you can think of it the other way. When I'm looking down on top of water and I reach my hand in, like the ball yeah. isn't where I thought it was or the fish isn't where I thought yeah. it was, is actually a little bit shallower because the light coming from the, f from, from the fish gets mm -hmm. bent. Get, there's a, here's the water. Light's mm -hmm. coming from the fish gets bent and then it breaks my eye over here. That's a single refraction event. Yeah. Uh, what I think what you've done here is you've you've put like a bunch of refraction events so that when yeah. light's coming through, instead of getting bent once, it gets mm. it gets bent, 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 and so it's like a smooth many yeah. refractions. If that's ref if that's what you mean by refraction, then yeah, I think this is it. It's refraction. Oh. But it could be it could be some kind of holographic projector where it like takes the image from all directions behind right. and then projects it forward. So and that's how? what makes more sense to me. Okay. Um, because I guess the the key part of a hologram is that it's momentum conserved. And so and so that means it needs so so it's yeah, momentum conserved is one way to say it. Another way to say it is is Depending on where you are standing, you see something that's appropriate from your perspective. How do I mm -hmm. say this? It's like, well, so like it's, if you if you look at an object, if you look at a photo, you get no matter how you look at the photo. Like, say this is I got a piece of paper. Say this is the photo. Mm -hmm. I look at the photo at all the different angles. I see a two D image. Right. It's a fixed perspective. You you're not seeing it from a different side. Yeah. But if I have Whereas, like a three D object like the remote, and I change my angle. Right. I see all the different angles. So you see somehow, the object from the you see an object from the appropriate perspective from when you're standing. Right. And so you're saying moment. I think momentum. Let me fill in blanks here. Momentum conservation means of the light needs to right. be like when I look at different angles, 
the momentum of the light is correct for this particular object. Right. I'm seeing I'm seeing the light as if it's coming directly from that object, not as if it had been bent from something else, which is what you would see if you're looking at a flat object. It's I'm seeing the light coming off this thing and coming out at, at a bent angle. Yeah. Whereas if I were to be on somewhere else, I'd be seeing a different angle. Mm -hmm. So are we saying the image that the holograph holog holographic projectors emit is of the rocks behind. Right. Because otherwise, if I was standing up here and I know this, if, yeah, yeah. so we're standing, we're here, we're, we're standing with the cameras. Yeah. If the, when, when we look through where the ship is, where uh, we, we should see a tree behind there. Right. So that means that the light from the tree is coming straight towards us. And, yeah. and if there's nothing there, it should hit its eye. If there is something in there, it needs to be bent around such that it mm -hmm. still gets into our eye. Yeah. Alternatively, it needs to come from a projector that mm -hmm. knows where we are and knows where the trees are and then can send us the correct image. Yeah. That sounds like a hologram. Sounds like a hologram. So I think Scotty says it's a refractor and then Kirk says it's a hologram. One, uh, I, I don't think they're both right, I but I think right. we I think we broke it down. There's two potential technologies that could be at work. Um, I suspect S Scotty said the right answer because he's the engineer, and then Kirk said some stuff, and Scotty's like, "You're guessing, oh, yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah, no yeah, 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 sure, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, okay, yeah." <laughs> like I, yeah, I've done this where I'm like, I don't want to explain this. Like, okay, yeah. it's what you think it is. It's fine. <laughs> we're, we're, we're moving on. We got we're moving here. on. Yeah, actually, not important. It works. We're moving on. <laughs> that's right yeah we don't need to spend 45 minutes debating whether it's a hologram or refractor like it's working boss like let's let's go on and rescue our crew <laughs> that's right <laughs> also awesome that uh i don't remember her name she ca she has these sitting around i don't know where they came from yeah and they're well maintained even though they are exposed to rain that's right interesting i wonder if these things can update for what the rain erosion should be like on the floor I mean, it must. It must be some sort of dynamic something. Otherwise, like, it wouldn't take otherwise, up the subtle changes. You would end up with a really nice clean patch underneath, right? No, and like, if the Franklin is on top of the the vegetation, then the vegetation yeah. isn't getting light, which means they're not growing. They're dead, yeah. which means from an overall, like, an aerial view, you'd have all this life and stuff in a little little circle <laughs> that's ship-sized with everything dead underneath. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would not work. Plus, there's, like, erosion and all kinds of stuff that would change. It'd be look really odd. You're like, what the heck? Yeah, what the heck? If you looked. If you looked. Maybe people yeah. don't look that carefully. Yeah. Kirk and the crew are going to do the rescue mission of the other crew that's been captured by Crawl's men. And Kirk gets on a motorcycle. Let's... Why is he going so fast? Look at this. So fast. What are we doing? This motorcycle that hasn't been touched So dangerous. What are we doing? I mean, we got rocks. I'm glad this is like a path that people have sort of maintained <laughs> a little bit. That's right. If it wasn't, man, if uh, if if a unknown, if an unforeseen rock was in his in the trail right now, what is he going to do? He's going to slam into it. Yeah. Imagine this boulder and yep. this boulder like collapsed and just completely block the path. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Then they're and they're they're going over the handlebars. Right. So why not take the motorcycle at a nice like 10, 15 miles an hour? I don't know how fast it would. That, that, that feeling when you're like you're moving steady, but you're not going so fast that you couldn't stop for some unforeseen thing. I mean, gosh, and this is gravel. It's not asphalt. That's right. And I don't it doesn't look like some kind of dirt bike. It looks like a road bike. Uh, is that right? Hard to say. Uh, hard to say. Oh, I guess the, it could I don't be know. an adventure bike, which is the hybrid of the two. Oh. Either way, I think, like, going on gravel, I think that's advanced motorcycling. Yeah, yeah. And then going fast through a trail you've never been on before. With a passenger. With a passenger. When you could have gone slowly. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing, what are we doing? Kirk? What are we doing? What are we doing? Actually, I, I don't even know how they did this. Because they teleport in already moving. And so does that mean he teleported from the Franklin already moving? I mean, okay. Right? So let's say you could you could say I'm going to teleport from here to there, and I'm uh -huh. stationary here, 
and I want to be moving at 60 miles an hour when I teleport in. Okay. So I teleport myself in going 60 miles an hour. And as I materialize, I'm moving along the ground. It doesn't mean like somebody is in like the teleporter, like holding up the back end, like, all right, rev yeah, it yeah. up. <laughs> right. Cause, cause the wheels have to be moving. Otherwise if, if, if he's stationary on the telepad on yeah. the Franklin, but then suddenly moving, but his wheels aren't like uh, mm. over here, but his wheels aren't moving, then he should skid to a stop. Right. Or he's like in first gear and he hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Why not teleport in stationary, start and up the bike, start up. Yeah. and go in there at a nice steady speed? Why do we even use the bike? Just walk in. Is it we? This is just unnecessary danger. That's right. Yeah, walk in silently as opposed to making this engine noise, which is echoing through here. Oh yeah, that's a good point. If they have like automated sensors, like noise, or even just or, somebody happens to be walking around, though, they're like silence. Oh, this beautiful nature, so serene, so so nothing here. Then. <laughs> what call it what what oh, is this there's two people there <laughs> a, a sound that i haven't heard in 200 years since we lost that motorcycle yeah yeah it's even worse i'm thinking sensors you're thinking like a guy walking around it's so I noticeable mean, it's not nature sounds it's that's right it's an engine <laughs> kirk what are you doing weird weird tactical situation but they needed the bike later so they did need the bike makes sense for the, makes for sense. the distraction what did not make sense is this artifact turns out to be an ancient weapon and it's so dangerous that the ancient alien species, they broke it apart and spread it across the galaxies that would never be, be used again. And it seems so dangerous, but then they, they use it perfectly. Super scary. Super swarm stuff. Yeah. Can't defend against it. You get like eaten alive bit by bit. Right? Right? Oh, super gross. Super, yeah, it just it makes my skin crawl. But what are the rules for this thing? Like, does it eat organic matter? Because it eats her up. Yeah. But it doesn't eat the door like or the glass or whatever this is. And so this is like an ancient weapon. It's super dangerous, super powerful, forbidden. But Crawl and his lieutenant and even Ohura are, like, are pretty comfortable standing at the door here. Like none so, of them are like okay. running away from the door. Like you got to get away. Like, right. So it's like they know the door and glass and seals of the door can stop the swarm. But how, how, how do they know that? Like, is that a sealed room? Are the seals? Yeah. What if there's ancient, a little, little this, crack in here, a little crack in the yeah. door? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, this is pieces of the Franklin ancient, no, not ancient, but like hundreds of years old Starfleet. Mm -hmm. You know, like the seal on the door may not be perfect. And then they have this little opening and then whoosh, the swarm comes through. Yep. Swarm, a little There's... crack here. Maybe the door doesn't close completely. A little crack, a little mm -hmm. draft. A little. Did they yeah. like smoke test this room? Yeah. A little, little crack here and all these little, I don't know, buggy things, mm -hmm. little nanoparticles, whatever they are, like creeps through here and it eats everyone. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're also acting like, oh, the swarm cannot eat the door. The swarm cannot... Yeah, compromise yeah. the door. They just like I know this. They don't know that. They're, Super they're, confident. They, Isn't this the first time they've used it? The first time they've ever seen this. They didn't even know what. They didn't even know it was a weapon until they crash landed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so maybe this thing doesn't eat organic material. But then, so it doesn't. It does eat organic. It does not. It does not eat inorganic. Yeah, but I then think that's correct. Her uniform gets eaten up. Maybe those are like cotton fibers, so they're organic, but. The badge, the badge gets eaten. I think. I mean, okay. So let's say they don't eat the uniform. They like chomp on it and spit it out, and then get to the organic okay. stuff and eat. But that means they can tear through non-organic material. That's right. Which is so not means... consumed but broken. Which means that this mm -hmm. door is still vulnerable. Right. So that means maybe they can't get through the door quickly, but they can start doing some work on it. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Which means I think people's reaction would be, my reaction would be, maybe I freeze. People freeze. Yeah. But I think a lot of people would be like, I'm running. Please yeah, like, get me out like, of here. Like your your first impulse is to back away and you maybe mm -hmm. fall on your butt and you're like scooching yeah. back on, on the floor. Yeah. Was it, f there's fight, freeze, flee. Fight or flight, yeah. Fight, fight or flight. That would, I think that would kick in. I don't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're so confident, though. 
was so confident that it won't eat through the Weird. door. I don't understand what this weapon is. Oh. Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, it's bad for sure. For sure. But I don't, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Swarm tech. This was cr Okay. This blew me away. Okay. So the Franklin needs to get up to terminal velocity to turn on its thrusters, which that doesn't make much sense to me. But okay. It needs to get up to terminal velocity while falling to get the thrusters on. But why do such a risky thing? Let's watch. And we'll we have to achieve terminal velocity in order for the stabilizers to provide lift. Are you sure okay. this drop is high enough to do that? We'll find out. Okay. Ventress. Okay. Clear scenario. Okay. How is this a good idea? What are we doing? <laughs> this is a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> So I don't think it makes sense because it, if it was a wing, like a wing on an aircraft, on a like a regular aircraft in today's world, you need a certain minimum speed to generate lift to go into the atmosphere. But these are thrusters. We're not using the flow over the surface of the craft to generate lift. We just have thrusters that are blasting down. Why is it necessary for there to be terminal velocity? I mean, I guess, okay, so I guess if the Franklin had an airfoil shape, like that that shape of the that tear not quite teardrop, that, that shape of the of a wing, um, then you could generate lift, but it, it doesn't. It's a it's a spaceship made for space. Mm -hmm. made for space. So it doesn't have that shape. And then and then worse here is right at the end. Yeah. Like if they did a smooth scoop out, I could get it. Yeah. But they don't. They flatten out here. Right. Like this this is this is coming straight down. It's not like flying, scooping out. It's it's flying, it's flying flat, and then it's it's, it's going to hit its belly, the bottom. Right. I don't know what part of the ship is called like that. But it's going to hit the bottom, and so now, now you have your thrusters pushing down, which is going to counteract that that downward momentum. But you could have just done that from the, the top. top of the cliff, just turn them on, downward and momentum, then, and then lift up. Right. This this is the most challenging scenario you could have given them. Right. right. It has to not only not only has to have, it's like. It's like you're driving forward and you put you just slam your car in reverse and so then your tires are like screeching backwards on the floor but you could have just stopped and then gone backwards right like wh why stop yourself and then reverse when you're already stopped just reverse just reverse so they're sitting on the top of the mountain they could just turn on the thrusters and turn on thrusters and then go and go instead they need to fall at terminal velocity which doesn't seem to be connected to the thrusters at all no, nope. they're not using the lift of the Franklin. It's not even a nope. lift generating ship. Yep. And there's no aerodynamics. Turn, yeah. Aerodynamics and then they turn into a position where there is no aerodynamics. They're falling belly first. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Super wrong. And then also, it, also what started them? It, it's what, the, what, what pushed them off the edge? It's the onboard nudging system. Got like a little feet and then a little feet yeah. on the bottom, like little, extend little, out, like walk them yeah. out. Yep. Well, it, let's just watch it. Cause it's, it, it looks odd like they're like we're gonna fall we don't have thrusters but we have nudgers oh. Ooh, what, is this? what did that what what did that what did that i don't see their feet are there little like thrusters that i think it's shoot. smooth on the bottom i think they just had another machine somehow that was ready behind it to push it and a little little machine like a without machine without breaking it <laughs> what Use those thrusters. That. Use those. What did it, that means Starfleet in, installed some kind of nudging system for like some crazy scenario. What did what, the I mean, ship maybe, is designed for space? Maybe this happened in the past, and then Starfleet changed its ship design. They updated <laughs> it, and so now the ships can do this. I mean, well, I'm you. down for innovation. If they they got a problem, they can go solve it. They can apply it for future ships. That makes okay. sense. Okay. All right. Okay. The rest yep. of this don't make sense, but the nudge on the ship, that's canon to me. Look, it's it's just it's just going down like a it's rock. Just going, it's going it's hit. going it's going to hit. It's Why would the thrusters need oh. And then they hit rocks. The rocks would f the ship up. 
I mean, either and, okay. So if it if the ship is super solid and it hits a rock, it should apply enough torque to spin that ship around. Yeah. Or the ship is not solid; it's made like a ship, and then you have hull breaches. For sure. Right. For sure. Rocks. Probably. Rocks don't have any give, and engineered rocks. items do. That's right. I think it's the hollow. ship it's breaks. Hollow. It. It's hollow. The ship breaks as complicated machine parts and things, and the rock is just rock. It's not complicated. Weird. Weird scene. Weird scene. Unnecessary risky too. Just so lift risky. up. Just lift right up. And then. Okay, so this in this picture right here, the snow globe, which is the Yorktown station, is right there. And just off to the left of the screen is the nebula that is uncharted. What are we doing? It's How like this is, is this nebula? is like a mysterious dark place. Don't ever go there and let but also let's put up a camp. Let's put up a camp real close. Yeah. And let's put camp and let's actually put millions of people, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people in there. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? This is wild. Yeah. How close is it? How close is it? Let's find out. So this is the listening post? Listening post. Oh, it's right there. It's right, <laughs> it's right there. It's right. <laughs> you can't even see it with scanners or sensors or whatever. So the swarm comes in from nowhere. What are we really doing? It's that close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. It's like... It's like yeah. Yeah. Why? Why even put a sensor there? We can't sense into the nebula. That's right. I see. A, I still see a brick wall. I still see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. ah, so useless. I don't get it. In this fight, the final fight, Crawl says old friends, and I don't know who he's talking. Is he talking about Kirk? That's Kirk. That's Kirk doing stuff. My old friend. I mean, Carl met Kirk like two days ago, like one day ago. I, 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 he can't be talking about Kirk because it's he said old friend. He said old I mean, friend. But, okay, but he has been listening to Kirk's like personal logs for like a couple weeks. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, he's been because when Uhura and Sulu were down on the in the camp, they're like mm -hmm. we, they've been listening to us for a long time. Yep. So like, it's like if you're watching your favorite YouTuber, you're like I. I have a relationship with this person. Hey, old friends. But, <laughs> hey, old friends. But like, it's one way. <laughs> it's very it's much one, one way. way. <laughs> and old friends, this guy's been alive for like several hundreds of years, like 200, 300 years, whatever. He's like, hello, old friend. Like we met last week. <laughs> oh, we're old friends. Oh, if he's been listening for like 200 years, that means he's so, gone no, through. No, he, I mean, he's been, he's been alive for 200 something years, it, but he couldn't have listened to Kirk for 200 years. Which means he's been listening to multiple Starfleet uh, people over time and they've they've been they joined starfleet and then died joined starfleet and then died he's like had multiple like pretty traumatic loss events in his life again and again yet he's still willing to accept kirk as an old friend i mean this is a guy this is a guy he wears his heart in his sleeve like this guy yeah. is super open to making friends i mean we think yeah. of him as a bad guy but like he's making friends i mean he's I mean, he's good. just got good. a different perspective that's right. I mean, what are old friends except new friends that haven't had a lot of time yet? Yeah, that's right. Did I say that right? Whatever. Yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> what are what are new friends? <laughs> yeah, I said, it, I said it exactly wrong. <laughs> what are new friends except old friends that haven't had enough time? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, weird, weird for Crawl to yeah, say that. Yeah. Which means he's going to go slaughter everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this is uh, Crawl and his a couple of guys are in their little ships. They've penetrated the Yorktown and Kirk and McCoy and they're like timing this intricate thing to make Crawl hit the Enterprise. I'm not sure this is possible. Bones, there's a city plaza coming up. You got to make sure Crawl heads for it. Okay, what city plaza? Everything is a city plaza. <laughs> <laughs> the whole space station get is a city us up plaza. There. So, Kirk is coming in, scooping up. Kirk is scooping up. Okay, okay, okay. So, first off, the Enterprise is in, like, I don't know, one of those tubes for ships. Okay. And it, it goes through water and then comes out into the city plaza. Like a whale, which means yeah. 
which means the water itself is somehow contained in an area for the lake or the pond. And the Enterprise can go through it without just getting destroyed. It's, oh, it, I see what you're saying. There's like some type of confinement field for the water yeah. that keeps it in this narrow band. Because yeah. here they are underneath the water. Yeah. So the water's like above them somehow. Yeah. And then they they go through the water, not a problem. This is, so somehow the, the force field or whatever it is, confinement thing that's holding the water in place. Allows ships. Allows ships to just go right on through. Also, the timing of this is insane. Yeah. Because you gotta, you're, you gotta time these guys skimming across the water yeah. with your ship flying up. Yeah, and you have to cord. Kirk had to coordinate with McCoy and say you need him to be at this particular place, moving at this particular direction, at this particular time. And it's on the fly in a place they've never been before. Mm. Let's get one more How particular. Did... One more at this particular height. If these ships had been coming up over here. A bit, a bit higher, a bit further away from the water. If they weren't That's right. skimming the water, then you just fly ab above the Franklin. That's right. And in fact, not skimming the water is probably something they would want to do because yeah. that's less dangerous. I don't know if there's alligators. I don't want to go down there. And, you know, 10 meters to the, oh, I, don't know, I don't know how big the Enterprise is here, but like maybe 50 meters to the Franklin. left or right. Well, Franklin, yeah, Franklin. That's right. 50 Gosh. meters to the left or right. Yeah. Just, yeah. To, you know, it's not like crawl is like, I should center up. Like That's right. so many yeah. particular things that need to go absolutely precisely perfectly for this to work yeah i mean you could sit around and plan it out all day but sometimes you just got to look before you leap ah oh, fuck sometimes you just got to leap before you look <laughs> and then is that right is that what kirk does yeah leap before you look and then it yeah. works out that's worked out even if it's like so intricate and on the fly you should just do it and execute get done get it done it worked, get it, right? done. it worked hey it worked it worked. Impressive. Impressive timing. Impressive. And oh and and Sulu is flying a ship that has been not functioning for or, or has been sitting there for oh, two hundred years. Right. Like how is he used to the flight characteristics of this old ship? Has he ever flown a ship this old? Probably not. Even if even if he had like done simulations of the old ships, it's like Starfleet Academy why? years yeah, and yeah, years yeah. ago, <laughs> which why would you do that? Yeah. It it's old, so it's gonna have yeah. different flight characteristics because hey, he dialed it in. Right. Ah, oh, yeah. Did. I mean, you flew it a little bit, get a feel for it. Get a feel. Very adaptive. I mean, that's a good pilot. <laughs> that's a good pilot. That's it. So, in the center of the Yorktown is extremely localized gravity, and they say it. I think like so they declare it, but I don't. I don't get it. Be careful, Captain. Gravity's gonna get a bit screwy the closer you get to the center. Okay. Okay. But there it was. Like it turned off. It turned off. So gravity gets screwed towards the center. Like I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah. with that because for the methods in which we make gravity now, so th there's two ways. There's one is there's Kepler's law or I guess Gauss law for mass, where if you have an object in the middle and it's very massive, then things get pulled towards it. So just yep. like we're, we're, we're standing to the earth because the earth pulls us down. The moon right. goes around the earth because the, the earth is pulling the moon down and, and the moon yep. pulling earth too. Okay, so, so that makes sense. And so in the middle of the Yorktown, there's not much mass. In fact, it's the middle, so there's no mass. And so yep. I get it, so there should be low gravity because there's, there's nothing there. In fact, and as you, as you go around the middle, like the, you get pulled towards the middle, but the direction of that is always changing. Okay, but, but here's, it, it, it turns on and off like really quickly. So here, using the ladder, you can only use the ladder like this if you're applying force down, which means there's gravity in this room. Yep. And then it's off. Like it's a real sharp cutoff. So, and so the, <sighs> the other method in which we simulate gravity is we have rotating space stations. And so you're using the centrifugal force to simulate what you're, what you're feeling like gravity. But this thing isn't rotating like that either. So what, what's going on here? So my interpretation of this was that not, we, they're not using the mass form of gravity where it's like, just put a big mass there, right. like a planet. There's nothing in the middle. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing in the middle. I don't think it's the rotation type because that would mean everybody would be standing on the inside of the outer shell of like a cylinder. Right. And if we look at a picture of the Yorktown, gravity, there's like cities here that are going every which way. 
And and right. so gravity is locally defined as down in different locations on these like I don't know what we call them rings. Rings, sure. Oh like gosh, it's 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 even more than that because here it makes sense. Like if even if it was the rotating method, it makes yeah. sense for these people because they're standing yeah. on the inside. But for these people, they'd be pulled towards their heads all the time. Yeah, like, that's like, not gonna work. So, the only way for there to be buildings on both sides of this ring is I think they can just locally control it. So right. just, yeah, exactly. You just make whatever Star Trek gravity does mm -hmm. and you, you point them to where you need it to point. Yeah. And if you look in the distance there, there's actually a non-ring section where it's like a spoke. Oh, this right thing. There. Yeah. And there's, there's buildings on top and bottom, which means gravity is down on top and up on bottom. Yep. Yep. I agree. So that's, we don't even have the argument for like, rotation there because that's just a right. straight spoke so, so I, I think we are convinced that star trek universe can just make gravity point whichever way they need right. which means this gravity that they encountered kirk and crawl encountered in the middle was done on purpose for some reason done on purpose that's right uh scotty made it sound like it's because you're near the center it's where gravity's going to get screwy but maybe it's just because they made gravity screwy in here for some maintenance reason or something which which i could understand in like a cargo bay cargo bay makes a lot of sense to have yeah. in fact a variable yeah. sense of gravity because then if you have something heavy you can just turn the gravity down lift it up you know it's very light now very yep. little very little weight and then you can push it away if you need to and yep. then you set it down turn the gravity back on and it sits yep. there sounds great but this is not a cargo room it's not a cargo room and then why not make it a regular room where you can people can just walk around normally and control whatever yeah. Why would they want to float around like it's a space station? That seems really inconvenient. I mean, I guess looking at this picture now, there's multiple entries. Mm -hmm. And so if there's multiple entries, then which way is down other than like the enemy gate, which is over there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then just choose, just choose one. Just choose a direction yeah. and then people can come in from different sides and they're like, this is down now. But you put arrows in the room and they get like, this is down. And then everyone just reorients when they get there. Yeah. Didn't sure. Scotty say that this and, and crawl is here because it's like a central flow section where all the atmosphere comes in right. here, filters or whatever, and then gets sent back out? Exactly. Maybe something about that needs to be like the design of it's like, we should make this zero G. I'm not sure why, but maybe that's the reason. It's coming in from every which direction. We don't want the gas to be in gravity. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I don't know why else you would engineer this room to have weird gravity cargo bay does make sense but a control it's not room cargo bay. it's, not Car a, it's yeah. a control room it doesn't make sense i can't come up with an explanation i don't know let us know if you have an explanation quirky turkey quirky. okay so that was our review of star trek beyond beyond and the entire kelvin timeline because hey. i think this this is the Bummer third final. though yeah. Super, super cool timeline i would love it if we had a kelvin tng it's so so it's effectively tng but but starfleet is a little bit more on edge because we've encountered mm -hmm. these near civilization mm -hmm. destroying events like three times mm -hmm. yeah that'd be super interesting yeah. to see like Wait, is a, is discovery kelvin timeline i don't know i don't it know where unclear, discovery right? fits in yeah and then is, is kelvin starfleet more prepared for the borg I guess we're not going to see when the Borg encounters the Kelvin timeline Starfleet, but they've they've encountered swarms, future tech, all kinds of stuff. It right. feels like they should be more prepared for the Borg. Right. Even if they don't know what the Borg's capabilities are, but they've they they should just be more on edge, more ready for war, more ready to yeah. uh, or less willing to accept the Borg as hey, let's be friends. Like no, 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 no. like let's keep people at a distance. Yep. And if they could capture this swarm tech for R and D, then even better for fighting the Borg, right? Because the Borg have these cubes and they're like, that can shoot one or two things at a time. But then we're like, no, no, no. We just mm -hmm. swarm you, cut everything up. So I think that means they need to go Sick. into the nebula and find, you know, swarm ships and all that that's laying around and do a full debrief and re-up of Starfleet. Yeah. Tech. I mean, yeah. Start, start dismantling that nebula as resources for building swarms. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. there's... A galaxy, <laughs> many Galaxies galaxies worth, worth of mass. Of mass and <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys next time. Cool. See ya.